Now let's discuss some examples of conjugate functions. Um, the list will of course not be complete, as we will not cover all uh, possible functions to which you can compute the conjugate function, but uh, I hope that we get some, some useful special cases here. Otherwise, you, you are invited to, to look in the literature for more. Okay, so first of all, um, we, we will cover an example to which we, we can actually draw a picture uh, which makes things easier. So if we set f of x equal to uh, the absolute value of x, so the f is a function from r to r in this case, um, we can draw a picture for that. Um, this is how this function looks like. And uh, we, we, we saw that we can basically get an intuition for the conjugate function uh, whenever we um, look at those affine minorants with a fixed slope that touch the function um, in some point, or which are, uh, which are the closest to the graph of the function without um, going over the graph. Okay? And you see that whenever you have an affine minor end with a slope between minus 1 and 1, um, you get um, that the constant part of this of the tightest affine minor end will be 0. So they, the, the minor end will go to the point 0 on the vertical axis. And this means that um, if you write f star at uh, or for a slope a, then you will get 0 whenever you, you take a uh, in, the open in, in the closed interval between minus 1 and 1, so minus 1 and 1 included. Okay? And what happens if um, a is not in this interval? Well, you see that uh, no matter how uh, far away from 0 uh, we take our uh, we take our constant part of of the, the of this affine function. It will always have an, uh, uh, some intersection with this graph, either in in this branch or in this branch. Um, so in this branch, if the slope is uh, is bigger than one, and with this branch, whenever the slope is uh, lower than minus or yeah less than minus one. So uh, the supremum will then take the value plus infinity. So, um, in conclusion, the conjugate function is the function which is 0 on this interval, minus 1, 1, and plus infinity otherwise. And here we see um, one of the reasons why we uh, wanted to allow the value plus infinity in the first place. Because um, the function f uh, does not um, take the value uh, plus infinity. But in a natural way, we got the conjugate function to f, and, and this function, again, in a natural way, uh, assumes the value plus infinity. So it makes a lot of sense to just have this nice duality relation uh, between proper convex and lower semi-continuous functions on this extended real line, and then get um, the duality between those, um, in contrast to always having to deal with some um, domains of definition. So uh, this is uh, the reason, uh, or another reason, um, except from what I explained back then, to have the value plus infinity. All right, and you also see, by the way, that um, the conjugate function of this uh, absolute value is the indicator function of a set, namely the indicator function of the open, uh, of the closed interval between minus one and one, and as we see in uh, other in, in the next examples, this is not a coincidence. Okay, so uh, you can say that this was example A, and now let's come to example B. So if C uh, is a is a subset of our space H, and the subset is non-empty, closed, and convex. 
then uh, we can have a look at the indicator function of C and its conjugate, uh, of course, for uh, some, yeah, some vector A. And what we get is uh, the supremum over x in H of Ax minus delta C of x. And you see here, when delta C only takes the values 0 and plus infinity. So whenever we have the value 0, it doesn't change anything here. Whenever it takes the value plus infinity, then the, the, the expression inside these curly braces will be some real number minus infinity, so minus infinity, so it cannot affect the supremum in any way because minus infinity is less or equal than any value. Okay, so you can rewrite this as the supremum over only those values where the indicator function is zero, so x in c, and now you only take the inner product a, ax minus zero, so nothing. And in the exercise, we saw that this function has a name. It's called the support function of the set C. So we call this sigma C, uh, sigma C back in the day, and of A. And we have, we have shown that this function is uh, sublinear. Okay, so any, any indicator function has as the conjugate function, a sublinear function. And in particular, since you know that taking the conjugate of the conjugate, um, the indicator function of uh, the, the closed interval minus 1, 1 will have as the conjugate the absolute value function, which is clearly sublinear. All right. And let's see what happens if we uh, take a sublinear function. For example, you can take the, the absolute value or you can take a norm. Um, then it turns out uh, that um, the conjugate function to the sublinear function will always be the indicator function of the set. And actually, I will not prove this, but whenever you take uh, the conjugate function of any norm on, this, on, the, on the space H, you will get the indicator function of the unit ball of the dual norm. So if you take the indicator function of the, or if you take the conjugate of the L1 norm, for example, then you get, will get the, uh, as the conjugate, you will get the indicator function of the unit ball of the L infinity norm, uh, just as a side node. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, basically prove this. So if f is sublinear, then, well, f star of a equals supremum over ax minus f of x. Okay. x and h. Okay, and now um, one possible trick here is to replace x by 2y, okay? Of course, you can just take uh, y as half of x, and then you still cover the whole space, so the supremum will not be um, changed by this. And then you get the supremum over y of a 2y, because we replace x by 2y minus f of 2y. And you see that you can draw out the 2 for each thing. So uh, this is um, basically, you can, you, the, the, the inner product is, is uh, linear with respect to its second argument. So you can draw out 2 and just get 2 times um, the inner product of a and y. And since the, the function f is sublinear and 2 is a positive number, you can also draw, uh, you can also 
take out the two of the, uh, out of the f. So this is uh, two minus two times f of y. And I al already wrote. Ugh. I wrote the two already in front of the supremum, so no need for another two here. Okay, and you see that this is two times, and you again get an expression for the for f star of a. Okay, so you see that f star of a equals two times f star of a, so f star of a can only take two values, the only two, two values for, for which this can occur, and these are zero and plus infinity. Um, maybe we also have to assume that f is proper. I, 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 I think that's, that's a reasonable choice because that's what we always want. So that minus infinity cannot appear here. All right, so now we have proved that uh, these properties hold for, or that, that um, f star of a can only take um, the value 0 and plus infinity, and this means that f star is an indicator function. Okay. So, uh, we have seen that for any sublinear function, for example, for the absolute value, you will get the indicator function of a set. For any indicator function, you will get a sublinear function. So what happens to functions which are both indicator functions and sublinear? And so uh, let's, let's, uh, let's define a cone, a set K, uh, uh, subset of H is called a cone if um, for all x in K and alpha greater or equal than zero, um, alpha K, alpha x is also in K. So this means you can um, you can take any any value and um, any multiple of it will also also be in K and my cones always contain zero here. Um, so uh, s s there are other definitions which which do not always include zero, but here uh, we we always want to have zero because we want to have this uh, this set closed. Okay. So you see that. Uh, the indicator function is sublinear because you can multiply it with any um, non-negative number and you will still get um, uh, zero uh, for... Uh, uh, you would always get that the indicator function of this multiple will always be uh, zero, which is uh, exactly the multiple times the indicator function of, of the point. So um, you can easily check that the indicator function is sublinear, and then we see that why well, the the indicator the the conjugate function of the indicator function will always will also be sublinear because we have an indicator function, and it will be an indicator function because it is sublinear. So you see that um, that then the the indicator function uh, of k and taking its conjugate is also um, is also the indicator function of a set, of course. So it takes the value zeros, values zero and plus infinity, and it turns out that it is zero whenever this thing here is non-negative. Otherwise. Um, Otherwise, you can multiply it with an arbitrarily large uh, number and get arbitrarily large values. So you, you would get the supremum plus infinity. And therefore, it is zero if ax less or equal than zero for all x and k 
and plus infinity otherwise. And this is delta k, and now a circle here of a, and if you, for example, take, take a cone k here, then what you get is the so-called polar cone k circle. So you get this by, by taking like these um, 90 degree angles here and yeah, and then the result will be the so-called polar cone. And the definition is exactly um, the, this one here. Okay, and this says that the angles between any element in the polar cone and the, the original cone uh, should be greater or equal than 90 degrees. Because that's the, the statement of this inner product here. Okay, and for example, the polar cone of um, R and plus, so the non-negative orthand uh, will be minus R and plus. So R and minus, if you want. So the, neg the negative or non-positive um, orthand. And another interesting example, which we will not really discuss more here, is the cone of um, positive semi-definite uh, matrices within the space of symmetric matrices. And it turns out that the polar cone is the cone of negative semi-definite matrices. And this is also interesting for, for some applications within um, optimization, the so-called semi-definite programming. And yeah, we have discussed some examples here. Uh, in particular, interesting is this uh, duality also that, um, so duality of, um, of convex function, convex functions, if you restrict yourself to indicator functions of cones, then you get the duality between um, convex closed cones. And the next step will be to use these uh, conjugate functions for uh, the duality between optimization problems.